everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about the intersecting chords theorem. Now a chord is if you have a circle, that's a really bad circle, let's assume it's perfect, and I have a line that goes across the circle and both endpoints of that line are on the circle, then I have a chord. So it cannot be just floating out in space. It can't just like be like that. It can't be like that. It has to be, it can't be like that. It can't be like inside and outside. It can't be like that. It has to be with both endpoints on the circle. So intersecting chords, you know, intersecting means crossing. So this is about chords that intersect or cross. So I'm going to explain to you what the theorem is, why it works, and then show you some examples using variables because they are going to throw those at you, I promise. All right, so first off, let's cover what the theorem itself is. It says that if I have two intersecting chords, and actually this is, I'm gonna draw over this in blue so we can see those are two different lines there very clearly. So I have line segment or that is a chord AC and this line segment that is a chord BD and they cross at point E. So this theorem says that if I have just from A to E and I measured that and I multiplied it by however long EC is, that that would be the same as if I measured BE and multiplied it by ED. Now, I have seen some math books that have put all these inside of absolute values. Uh, I don't really understand why, <laughs> honestly. I need to research that and figure out why some books do that. I don't personally get that. Why it says absolute value? Because we're measuring and we're not gonna get a negative measurement. So of course it's gonna be positive. I'm sure there's a very good deep mathematical reason for it. And frankly, I don't know. No one knows everything. I do not know this. So why does this work? This all has to do with similar triangles. So we are going to make some similar triangles. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this ruler so we can get a dotted line. So it doesn't have to be a, a, a solid line, just kind of like that I'm, so I can see these a similar triangles we're making, but I don't want us to forget about those original, original chords. And this isn't perfect, I know, but okay. So I have these two triangles now. A, B, E, and C, D, E. I'm gonna prove that they are similar. How do I do this? Well, there is a theory. Let's see, if you remember this, going back a little bit in geometry, if you have an inscribed angle, an angle that the point of the angle is on the edge of a circle, its measure is equal to half the intercepted arc. So if this is 72 degrees, this arc, it's not, we're just picking a number. And if I say that's 72, then this would be 36. And it does not matter if it is that angle or if it is that angle or if it is that angle. All of those angles are 36 degrees because they all intercept the same arc. All right, now let's look over here. I have this arc, A, D, and there are two different angles that are intercepting it. I have A, B, D, that's intercepting it. And I also have A, C, D, that's intercepting it. Because they are both intercepting the same arc, they must be the same angles. So if I put an arbitrary number in here, I'm just picking a number out of thin air. Let's say this was this arc was 120 degrees. Then, because this is an inscribed angle intercepting that arc, I would say angle ABD is 60 degrees. And then, oh, angle ACD is also intercepting this 120 degree arc. So it is also 
60 degrees. Now from this point, there's two different ways I can get another angle that is congruent between these two triangles. And it doesn't matter which way, because if you recall, angle, angle similarity says I only need to prove, uh, I only need two angles being congruent to prove the triangles are similar. So the easiest way is just to look right here. These are vertical or opposite angles. It depends on your math book, what they are called. But when you have two intersecting lines, the angles across that intersection, either side, are congruent to each other and they are called vertical or opposite angles. So it doesn't matter that I don't know what the measure of those are. I know they are vertical opposite angles, so they are congruent as well. Now I've got two angles that are congruent in these triangles, they are similar. Uh, the other way that you can prove the last angle, you do the same thing that we did down here with these intercepting this arc, you just go up here and you say BAC is intercepting that arc and BDC is intercepting that arc. They're both inscribed angles. They both have the same measure. Okay, so we've got, we have figured out a way we can prove all three of these angles are congruent. These triangles are definitely similar. Well, what, how does that help us? Similar triangles are proportional, always. I'm gonna get rid of these measures just so we've established they are similar. And I want us to focus just on the proportions. So, it's the corresponding, I'm just gonna put these instead. So we have this do, 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 do. So if I was to start from my single line to my double line, B to E, that would correspond to C to E. B to E to C to E would have the same ratio as, do a different color here, a to E, I'm going from this triple line to the double line, to D to E, triple line to double line. So it's equal to A to E to D to E. All right, so that is a true proportion. There's tons of proportions we can set up, tons of ways you can go about this. I am just picking this one proportion. I'm putting same side over here is to same side over, excuse me, same side over here is to same side over here as this side is to this corresponding side. This is a true statement with similar triangles, they're proportional. Now I have this nice little fraction. Well, with fractions, you can cross multiply, and what do I get? I get CE times AE is equal to BE times DE. And now we have up here, because there's my AE, AE times EC, EC and CE, same thing. They're both referring to this line right there. And on this side, I have BE, EE times ED. DE is the same, both referring to this line. So here's a, a sample problem. The one they're gonna start you out with is they're gonna give you a, a circle with intersecting chords and they're going to say solve for X. So you're just going to go, all right, it's intersecting chords. So I know the two pieces of this chord multiplied together are equal to the two pieces of this chord multiplied together. So we have four times X equals two times 10 or 20. You go, okay, well, I need to divide both sides by four and 20 divided by four is five, X is five. Here's the next level up that they're gonna throw at you. We have intersecting chords, but we have vari variables on both chords. It's just, they're, they're putting that algebra in. They love throwing algebra in with your geometry. You think you're away from it and you never are. So we have the two parts of this chord we would multiply those together, two times X plus three. And then we have the two parts of this chord and we multiply those together, three times X plus one. And now we're back in algebra land and you just solve it. You kind of forget about this for a minute and you're just going to solve it like you would any other algebra problem. So you're going to distribute, two times X is two X, two times three is six on the right side. 3 times x is 3x, plus 3 times 1 is 3. Now I want all the numbers on one side, all the variables on the other. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides to get all the x's on one side. The x's disappear from the left, and now I just have a single x on the right, plus 3. 
And then I'm gonna get rid of that three by subtracting it because it's being added. And so on the left, six minus three is three. And on the right, I just have X. One thing to be careful of with these kind of problems, make sure after you solve for X, find out if they're asking you for X or if they're asking you for the lengths of these chords. So in this case, if they're asking you for X, you have your answer, it's three. If they're asking you for the lengths of the chords, then this portion of the chord would be three plus three or six. So this whole chord would be eight. And on this side, three plus one is four. So this whole chord would be seven. Just be careful with that. And I'm not gonna go through all the, the versions of this because depending on your math book, they can get pretty mean. <laughs> they can do, um, they can have uh, binomials on both sides, like X plus one and X plus three here. So you end up with quadratics. There's so many variables, so many variety of problems they can do with this, but just whatever they give you, the same thing, you multiply the two pieces of each chord together, and then you go back to your algebra and solve for X or the length of those chords. If this was helpful or useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.